Good morning, everyone. I'm Sherry Shrallow, and I'm coming to you from Plant-Based Nutrition Movement. I wanted to share with you a great success that we had on Saturday, and I want to thank those of you who generously supported our efforts. On Saturday, PBNM board members and volunteers from our community collected 973 pounds of plant-based foods that we took down to an urban pantry in the city of Chicago called Lakeview Pantry, and we donated food for those in need. Now, what made our food drive so unique is that it was 100% plant-based, and we provided what we call food kits in brown paper bags, where people who come to the food bank will be receiving a bag with a recipe to make a wonderful black bean soup that's easy to make, nutritious and healthy, along with brown rice and some fruit, and all the other things that we donated to the pantry, including things like whole wheat pasta, oil-free pasta sauce, beans, um, lots of lentils, all kinds of plant foods, even including soy milk, which I'm sure is not so popular on the food pantry shelves. So people will have an opportunity to get those foods that will be health promoting. So again, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for those of you who generously donated to this cause. This is the first of many community service projects that we at PBNM plan on doing in 2021. I also want to tell you about a program that we're going to be sponsoring on February the 15th. It is a program on heart health and we were very fortunate to have Dr. Kim Williams as our keynote speaker for this two-hour Zoom seminar. Now, our program is going to be focused on the African-American community because, as we know, during this COVID crisis, this is the community that is the most hard hit and have had the most deaths from COVID. And part of that is a result of nutrition. So we want to help as many people as we can to adopt a whole food plant-based lifestyle to avoid getting those chronic diseases such as heart disease, diabetes, etc. all of those American, uh, standard American diet diseases to help them uh, prevent uh, as many COVID deaths as we can. So I'll give you more information as that gets closer. If you know of anyone who would benefit from this program, any African-American churches or community centers, please get in touch with me, instant message me, and I will reach out to those folks and send the information for this free two-hour webinar featuring Dr. Kim Williams, cooking demonstrations, and testimonials from African-Americans who have changed their health by adopting a whole food plant-based diet. So let's get to work today. So you know I'm on a date kick lately. And as we were collecting food on Saturday, of course, as the chairwoman of the culinary committee, I always have to bring food for our board members and volunteers. So one of the things that one of our board members, Judy Bryan, brought was this wonderful homemade energy bar recipe. And we all had a taste of it. And I said, oh boy, I got to share this one. This is a delicious one. So we're going to do that today. So this is what we're going to do. So I've taken 15 Medjool dates. And again, I purchased them at Costco because they're cheaper there. And I believe those are organic, organic dates. So these are wonderful. So I took 15 of these and I took the pit out. So this is very important. These are all pitted. So this is what it looks like. You open up your Medjool date, get that big pit out and get rid of it because we don't want to add that to the food processor. So I'm going to put 15 dates into this food processor, and it's an old Nelly of a food processor, so I hope it holds up. Sometimes it seems like it's on its last leg. Okay, let me just rinse my hands a minute, because dates are super sticky. And what we're going to do is we're going to put them in this processor, and let's see if we can get them into a little finer state. Okay, it looks like a big ball. 
pie. So what we're going to do next is add the rest of the ingredients. Now one of the things I love about making these energy bars is you can put anything you want into these. So I was talking to another board member, actually the co-chair of the Culinary Committee, Karen Kornick, this morning, and we decided, let's give you some options. So here's the basic recipe. We're going to take, it calls for a whole cup of pecan halves. Now, that's a lot of pecans, and if you're like me, I don't usually eat a lot of nuts in this quantity, but let's remember they're going to be in this whole recipe, so if you have one bar, you're just getting probably a couple of them. So I'm going to add those in. I'm going to add in a half cup of, I use gluten-free oats for my gluten-free friends. I have a very dear friend who I will be sharing these with soon, and she cannot have any gluten, so there we go. Now we might add a little bit more oatmeal at the end if you want to make them a little more cookie-like, but we'll see how that goes. We'll check them out. And then you take a tablespoon of chia seeds. And again, um, these are the chia seeds I have. These are an organic chia seed. I'm going to add those. Then I'm going to add a teaspoon of my vanilla extract. So throw that in. Get that out of there. And I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, and it calls for a fourth teaspoon of salt, but I just put a, a tiny drop of salt in. I don't like to add too much salt to anything I'm making, so just a little drop of salt. And all we're going to do is we're going to now put this back on the food processor. Let's see what happens. So what we're going to do, I'm going to transfer this to a big bowl. There's sort of a big lump here, but we're going to add all this together. Take this off. I don't like to waste a drop. There we go. I'm going to put these in. I'm going to just blend this and mix it with my fingers a little bit. Sometimes you just have to dig right into things. Get them just the way you want them. So let's do that. Boy, it's really stuck, some of this. Dates are sticky. Very, very sticky. Okay, come on, Bates, get off the side there. They're fighting me. Come on. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, so let me mix these up a little, get all this together, and then we're going to add some other things. I think we can make these even better, which I like to do. So what I decided to add is a couple of cocoa nibs. So let me grab those. Right over here, we've got cocoa nibs, and again, these have no sugar in them because they're just raw. So let's open up the bag and I'll toss just a little bit in. Again, there's no specific amount you have to throw into these. And then I like a little taste of coconut. Now you could add other things. I mean, you could put raisins in them. Oh, I know what we could add that would be sort of different. I don't know if we'll add them, but we'll talk about it. So let's add just a little bit of these reduced fat coconut flakes. These are just rehydrated coconut. And then the last thing I want to show you, and Karen Kornick suggested maybe adding a little cayenne pepper. Now I'm going to not add these, but I have done this with banana and ice cream, and it really gives it a teeny little kick, which is interesting, but we'll do that for another day. So let me just put all this together now. We're going to blend this in, and already you can see that this is a really nice consistency, pretty sticky. I want to just get everything in there as best I can. Combine it all, and then we're going to put it on this parchment paper, and I'm going to use my rolling pin to roll it out. Okay, so put the dough onto the parchment paper, and we're going to take my little rolling pin, and I'm going to just roll it out. I want to get it so it's about maybe an inch thick, and sort of into a rectangular shape if possible. So we'll do this. this way now. Still a little bit thick. What I'm going to do is just push it together, make it like a rectangle. That'll be easier to cut our, our little pieces up. 
and I think we can get a good, oh, I don't know, about a dozen at least pieces out of this, maybe more. So I'm just going to keep rolling, rolling, rolling. Now we go this way. Go out this direction a little. It looks so pretty, doesn't it? Okay, now, all I'm going to do is take my knife. Let's see if we're going to cut them. And we're going to cut them into some bars. So again, I'm going to try and make this as rectangular as I can. I'm just going to use my hands here to shape this into a nice rectangle. You see it's a little thicker here, so we're just going to push it down. A little, oh, that's a little thick there. Okay, now watch this. I'm going to take each one of these and I'm going to cut them into a square. That's sort of not a square, but we'll get that into a shape. And then I'm going to put them on my baking sheet that I've lined with parchment paper. Those are perfect. And then all you're going to do is put them into the oven at a 200 degree preheated oven and you bake them for 30 minutes. And what this does is it helps make the texture more dry and less sticky, so then you can cool them at room temperature and refrigerate them, or you could put them into the freezer, which I think is a better option. Freeze them, and then just take out as you need them. So let's see how many we can get out of this. So this is a great snack, again, for kids when they come home from school, or for us adults when we want a little something that's delicious and sweet. But we're not adding anything except natural ingredients, which is great. Look how nicely they come out. They're so easy to work with. I love it. Very simple. Okay, let's do a couple more here. We'll get them all in. There we go. And then I'm going to share with you something I made um, yesterday for our lunch that is so simple and just so delicious. So in the wintertime, I am a soup crazy person. We have soup just about every day. I have a pot of soup going or one that we're working off of during the week. So I created what I call Sherry's Vegetable Miso Soup, uh, which is just unbelievable. Now, one of the things with miso is that it usually contains soy, but for those of you who are soy free, there's something called chickpea miso, which does not contain soy. So you can definitely enjoy a miso soup uh, with made with chickpeas and no soy. You can get it online. I was looking today to see where it is. I think you can get it at Amazon online. So it's a little bit expensive, but it goes a long way. You don't use a lot. Okay, let's see. How many do we have here? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, nine, ten, fifty, six, seven. I have 20 little bars. That's a lot of bars. Okay, let me just wash my hands. Get all this sticky stuff off of me. And if you have any questions about anything that I ever cook, and you're not on Facebook Live and you're watching this later, oh, please feel free to message me and I will get back to you. I love to answer questions about the things that we're doing. And again, I would appreciate any donations that you would be able to give to Plant-Based Nutrition Movement by going to pbnm.org. And there is a donate button. All of that money goes to our programming. We're going to do more food drives. We're going to do um, a lot of different programs. I have some good stuff coming up that I can't share with you yet because we're not sure if it's going to happen, but we're sort of working on that premise that good things are coming next year. So please join us and uh, join us for free at pbnm.org. You can get our newsletter every month and see what we're up to. And I'm going to put these in. I'm going to put the timer on 30 minutes. There we go. Now, let me just show you the soup that I made. I'm going to take it out of the refrigerator. Got a lot of it. So here's a little one. But I want to get the big one out so you can see it. Okay. So... This is a recipe really that my mother sort of taught me, but I, I plant-based it. It's veganized. So what it is, it's um, a soup that has a vegetable broth, broth base, and you can use any vegetables you like. I happen to like 
um, onion. I, I dice an onion and I, and I use carrots. I cut up the carrots and celery. And I used fresh canned tomatoes. I used frozen corn and peas. And I put it in a pot after I saute the vegetables. Oh, and I also added one potato that I cut up because I like how that thickens the soup. And I just cook it slowly until everything is nice and cooked. The seasoning that I like to use is something my mother used to use. And it's called, let me find it here. I just saw, here it is, fennel seed. Fennel seed gives the soup this wonderful flavor. And it's all about the spices. So after you've cook the soup for however long it takes until everything is softened. You let it cool down, and I use about two boxes of vegetable broth for a big pot of soup like this. But again, use more or less according to your, your likings. Once it's cooled, take your miso paste in the refrigerator, get it out, I'll show you what mine looks like. I'm using an organic mellow white miso. This is the same company that sells the chickpea miso that you can get, that's soy free. And then you just take it out, put it in a little bowl, it looks like this, it's a real thick paste. Take a little water and just mix it up until it's more liquidy, and then you just put it into your soup. Start slowly, maybe a couple tablespoons at a time that you've mixed with water, and then taste the soup until it's just the way you like it. And this soup will last us for several days, so we're going to have it for lunch as soon as we finish this video. So thank you for coming to our little cooking demo today. And again, thank you so much for all your help that you provide at pbnm.org. And I'll see you soon for another cooking demo. Have a wonderful day.